I'm Robert, and this is Haslip PsychoWorks. Today, we're going to continue working on our mini bike project. We actually have a few parts that we're going to put on or in the mini bike today. Putting all of this to or into this. First up, we're going to mount our LED light. So in case we're riding and it starts to get a little dark, we're covered. Uh, nothing fancy here, just a little LED light. Got this off Amazon. And as usual, I will put a link in the description to this light. And we're also going to do some much needed maintenance slash repair on the bike. I have two of these. They are 145 by 70 by 6. They are the Super Turf Plus tire. Um, a little better tread pattern than the V-blocks that are on there now. V-blocks tend to rattle your teeth loose. So these will be good all around for street and off-road use. These came from BMI Carts. And like everything else in today's video that I purchased, there will be links in the description. So now we're going to take our front wheel off so that we can pull this V-block or V-tread tire off to replace it with our super turf tire. So there's a cotter pin and a nut on this side and it's pretty much just this really long bolt. So once you pull that cotter pin off on this side and pull that nut off then it should come out. Pay attention to the orientation of these spacers and once you put it back if you put these incorrectly it will center the wheel in between the forks. Cotter pins out. Castle nut off. Got our wheel off, and our mini bike is resting on the rear tire of the frame and the front fork. I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off the valve stem. What we want to do is deflate this as much as we can and then what we'll do is we'll actually pull the core out of the valve stem. Compressed air is no joke. Uh, it's essentially a compressed spring um, in gas form and you know how dangerous those are if you've ever swapped out any struts or anything on a car. 
not something that you want to get hit in the face with or anything like that so it is air it is you know what we breathe every day and whatnot but when it's compressed it can be dangerous be safe to pull the core out of the valve stem you can use a few these are probably a little too wide but some long skinny needle nose that go in there and you can you'll feel it when you slide it in you just unscrew it uh, I've picked one of these up from a local auto parts store I'll see if I can find an equivalent on Amazon for you guys and put it in the description but you simply take this two pronged in insert it and you'll feel its seat and you just untwist it now remember we did pull out a lot of air but we're not sure if we got it all so you want to hold on to this tight you do not want to turn this into a projectile pull this out and the seal looks good so we're going to keep this keep it clean uh, put it away somewhere put it in the baggie you can pick these up at an auto parts store uh, the same ones that you use on motorcycles and cars will work here as well so now that we've got our valve stem core out we know there's no air pressure what we need to do next is break the bead if you get lucky you can just push that down and for the next part I'm going to use a set of what's called tire spoons and I picked those up from Harbor Freight they're a good thing to have I get two or three of them when you go they're pretty cheap uh, you definitely need at least two to pull this off so take your first spoon push the tire down get your second spoon and you just want to work work this spoon around until you get the tire up over the edge of the rim can see our rim is loose in here. We just need to pull it through. There we go. Old tire off. And you want to inspect the inside edge where the bead sets. And if need be, clean it. Or if it's kind of rough, smooth it out with some sandpaper and a coat of paint. Our bearings still look good. Valve stem still looks pretty good. Our bead looks good. So we can go ahead and mount the new tire on this. Out for though, when you go to put new tires on pretty much anything, is to see if they're directional. Uh, if they are, you'll see a rotation arrow on there. Pay close attention to that. Look for that on both sides of the tire. A little tip for you guys is for lubricant because uh, just like most things lubricant makes it a little easier um, window cleaner Windex or the spray foam kind it will go on and provide just enough lubricant to get the tire on the wheel and the bead set and it'll evaporate it doesn't leave back leave behind any sort of residue or anything you can also use uh, soap soapy water and a spray bottle will also work just be careful of the soap that you're using tip help you get tires mounted on the wheel or rim just leave the tires out in the sun on a nice sunny day we'll heat the rubber up and make it a little more pliable all right so we've got the the wheel dropped in from one side now we need to get the tire down on the lip on the other side of the rim so I'm going to go ahead and lubricate this and pop it on Got our tire on. Press it down. Try to get the sidewall up against the bead on the rim. When we removed the valve core, that's going to allow more air to go in. You want a rush of air to help seat the bead. Um, this is one of those jobs where if you feel up to it, try it. If it feels like you're trying to stretch the tire or you're gonna bend your rim just stop it's not worth it um, I've done this a few times and I 
I've taken one of these tire spoons to the face before. Didn't feel so good. So if, if you don't feel like it's something that you can accomplish, there's no shame in taking it to someone that can. Any tire place should be able to do this for you in a matter of a couple minutes. So what we want to do now is hook this up to our compressor, fill it up with air, and hopefully we don't have any trouble setting our bead. Uh, you'll know when the bead is set because you'll hear it pop into place. Usually you do hear the bead pop into place. Uh, this time I think because I'm using a very small compressor. It's just one of the emergency inflators. Um, you can pick up anywhere. This one just so happens to run on 12 volts or a wall outlet. I didn't physically hear a pop. So what I'll do is I've got about 20 pounds, 20 psi in it right now. We still don't have the valve core in the valve stem. I'm going to pull the compressor off the wheel and I'm going to bounce it around a couple times and make sure our bead is set. And then I'll put the core back in and we'll fill it to the appropriate psi. Into our valve stem. Uh, let's put the cap back on and reinstall it. Reverse of how we took it off. Make sure you pay attention to your spacers on the front forks so that we get our wheel centered back in our forks. All right, we've got our axle back in along with our spacers in the appropriate location. Not too tight. And we'll I'll grab a new cotter pin and put that in. Procedure is going to be the exact same on the rear. The only difficulty there is not only do you have to line up the axle and the spacers and the wheel, you also have a sprocket to deal with. Uh, the exact same procedure. Next up is our header from Go Power Sports. And this came with extra gaskets as well. Um, pretty, pretty nice piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to lob this end off, and I'll show you why here in a second. We're going to cut that pipe to better fit our pit bike muffler. Um, not really going to be a performance item. It is, I don't know if you can see through there, but it is straight through. Give us a nice tone. Uh, not looking for power out of this, just looking more for a sound thing. Um, and it's going to look pretty sharp as well. This came from eBay. It came with this optional mount. Not sure if we're going to use this or not. Alright, so to start, we're going to take our muffler off. Let's go ahead and see if we're going to have any fitment issues with this header pipe on this particular mini bike and engine combo. We're working with right there. And this is our pit bike muffler. Not sure. I don't really want it sticking way out the back. We may have to uh, move some stuff around here, but nothing we can't handle. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, kind of look this over real quick and uh, see see what kind of solution we can come up with to make all our parts here that we just ordered work. Our weapon of choice, or tool of choice, depending on how you feel about it is going to be the almighty Sawzall. Let's get into it. So the next thing we want to do is figure out where we're going to cut this header pipe to best fit our pit bike muffler. And I'm thinking we're going to cut it a little proud, just in case. 
and we'll go ahead and mark it right here. All right, so I went ahead and cut our header pipe and I slipped our pit bike muffler on and tightened the header pipe down to the cylinder head. And I think that's gonna work pretty good right there. See, I finished welding our muffler onto our header, and all I did was paint it with some high temp satin black. What we have here is the adapter for an open element air filter for the stock carb on the Predator. Uh, this is also a Go Power Sports piece, and it comes with the uh, bracket. I believe this is for the choke and comes with a new gasket and here's the filter it's a uh, cotton element filter this is also from go power sports it came as a kit with the adapter and it also came with a pre-filter sock so this will keep some of the finer stuff off the filter and not clog the filter as fast. And they do have color options when you go to purchase this. Uh, I believe it's red and blue. Of course, being Haslip Cycle Works, we went the red. Um, and then the smallest piece that we have today is a new main jet for our carburetor. Because we are increasing the air in and out, we need to increase the fuel. We don't want a lean issue. So this is a bigger jet uh, and also help us make a little bit more power. The next step in our performance upgrade for this video is to remove the factory air box and replace it with the Go Power Sports air filter adapter and K&N style filter. <laughs> factory jet out. We're going to put our new drill jet in. Same way it went in. This way up. And the knot section for the screwdriver down. Just snug. Don't need to tighten the mess out of it. And we'll go ahead and add our bowl back. Sure that's seated correctly and that you have the washer so as not to induce any leaking. This is what she looks like. We have our LED light installed on the bracket that we made, but we don't have it hooked up. Uh, we're actually going to save that for the next episode. The other thing we didn't install on our Predator 212 was the 18 pound valve springs. The reason we skipped that this go around was we're still on the factory governor. As you can see here. There's a spring that goes to the governor arm, to the throttle. 
Um, kind of want to keep that intact until I can get some more parts to make it safer to rev this thing out. Once we get those parts, then I'll go ahead and put the 18 pound valve springs in. I guess all that's left now is to ride it. Alright guys, well as you can tell, those mods did make a major improvement. Our throttle response is way snappier. We didn't pick up any real top end. I think we're limited to the gearing and the factory governor. Um, just mathematically not possible to go any faster until that's addressed. However, our zero of the top speed happens I swear at least twice as fast um, <laughs> this thing is a hoot it gets and gets um, like I can't wait to see what this thing does once we get rid of the factory governor do those 18 pound valve springs and a few other things that if you want to see you're gonna have to subscribe and stay tuned for um, I did kind of touch on one of the other things we wanted to do the LED light is attached but we don't have it wired up to a switch or anything yet. So in the next episode, we'll be addressing that and how to hide the battery. We're not going to put a charging system on this Predator. And we'll start building an accessory for this mini bike that will make you cooler than anyone else in your neighborhood. And when you see what we're building, you'll see why the word cooler is a play on words. Um, stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Um, this thing is an absolute blast, but remember it's not for kids anymore. Um, but until next time guys, get up, get out there and do it.